Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about Horsebull's algorithm. So first, who made it? Nigel Horsebull, who is also the author of C programming in Berkeley Unix environment, is the one who created it. So that's just a little fun fact before we begin. So what does it do? Horsebull finds a given string of m characters, also known as a pattern, within a longer string of n characters, also known as the text. Why is it useful? Well, it's faster than the brute force method because it uses input enhancement. Now, if you don't know what that is, that's okay. It's really simple. So first, you just pre-process the pattern to gain info about it. Then second, you store the info in a table of some kind. And three, you use the info during a search of the pattern in a given text. So today we're gonna to be going through one example and then we will be talking about the time efficiency and space efficiency at the end. So let's go through an example right now. So the first step in Horschbull's algorithm is going to be to make a bad match table. Um, as you can see, I've already have a text assigned, which is Horschbull's algorithm is cool explanation mark. And the pattern is cool. Now, as a human, you can totally see that cool is at the end of the text, but as a computer, they cannot see that, so they have to go through specific steps. So this, in this case, the first step is to make a bad match table. So the first thing you wanna do is write out the pattern. So this is a really short pattern. Sometimes they're longer, obviously. But then you also want to write out the index values of said pattern starting at zero. Okay, and then from looking at this pattern, you can obviously tell that the length is equal to four. Those are important things for later when we're actually going through the algorithm and testing it. But first of all, the thing you want to do in a bad match table. So what you do for this is you write out each unique letter in the pattern um, in the bad match table and then a star for other all other letters. And you always do this star in case because the text doesn't always have the letter that's in the pattern. So in this case, we have three unique letters because we have two O's. So we have C, O, and L. C, O, L, and a star for all other letters. Okay, so what you're gonna do next is you're gonna do a calculation that we will use in later in the algorithm. So that calculation is going to be the pattern length, which we will in this case call it L, minus the index, and then always minus one. So you're gonna do this for each letter in your pattern. So I'm gonna say it's C of zero, so that we know it's at index zero. We're gonna do this exact calculation. So L is four, the index is zero, and minus one. And that will give us three. Now, what do we do with this number? We put it in our bad batch table. So under C, we will put three. Okay, next one is O of one. So L, our pattern length is four, minus the index is one, and minus one. And that will give us two. Now this number, we would normally put in our bad match table, but we have another O. So let's see what we get for that one. So our pattern length, four, minus our index, two, minus one, which gives us one. And now since because we already had one O, but we had a second O, this O overwrites the first one. So if you wanted to write two in the bad match table, you would have erased it, and now you would write one. And then our last one is going to be L, L of three. 
Now the last letter is a bit different. You can either, it's either equal to the pattern length or it's equal to the existing value. If there's already been a number, another of that letter. But we haven't had an L yet in this um, pattern. So we're going to go with the pattern length in this case, which is four. So we will put a four into our bad match table under L. And then the star is always equal pattern length, which is four. So now we have our bad match table and we will go through an example or go through the text using this bad match table. Okay, so there's two main steps more that you need to follow to actually complete the algorithm and find the, where the pattern is in the text. So step two is to compare the pattern starting from the rightmost character in it to the text using the bad match table for shifts and alignments. And if there is no match, you move the pattern forward by the corresponding value in the bad match table. So that's why we actually found these values here. So you're gonna be using that. Okay. So the first thing you do is you're gonna to have to write out the text a number of times because it's easier to like put it underneath it. So our pattern is cool. So the first thing you do is you line it up with the first character. So we're gonna have C. lining it up with the H and the S at the end. So the first thing you're gonna do is compare the S with the L, because you wanna compare it with starting from the rightmost character. So it's kind of the opposite of normal English. So since L does not match with S, you find S in the BMT. That is the letter in the text. And as you can see, there's no S in the bad match table, but the star accounts for all letters and symbols. So that means that um, S corresponds to star, which corresponds to four. So you're going to shift the pattern four spots forward. And in this case, it will move it S B O O L. Yes, you're always matching it to the end. So and then you'll compare all of the characters in this case, one by one. So you see that L matches L, O matches O, O matches O, and we're so close, but C does not match with P. And because P is not in the bad match table in this case, um, it, it corresponds with stars, so we're going to shift four again. So we line it up again. And that C will be with the apostrophe. So you can hear A to L. Okay. 
And I forgot to mention, whenever you're doing this, if there's more than one that you have to compare to, when you, in terms of shifting the pattern, you always want to shift with the first comparison. Which was L in this case. So L in the table corresponded with four. So that's why we shifted four spaces. Okay, so we are comparing to A, and A is not in the bad match table. So in this case, we will go with star, and again, shift four spaces. This is not always the case. You often use a lot of the letters in your bad match table, but this one just doesn't have any in common. And you compare with R, the rightmost character, and R corresponds with star, which equals four again. So shift four spaces. Comparing with M. And L does not match M, so we will be shifting M spaces, which corresponds with star again, and star is equal to four. Now this one's a bit different because we're pairing with a, a symbol, but as you should know, symbols and letters that aren't in the bad match table correspond with the star. So this one is also going to shift four spaces. And we are at the final stretch. You compare all of the characters, not including the exclamation part, sorry about that. And you see that all of them match. And we are done with that example. So you can see it's a little bit troublesome to go through. It's a lot harder for the computer to make sense with than the human can, because we could obviously see that it was at the end but that's how you do it. To quickly discuss uh, the time efficiency, um, the worst case is big O of NM, where N is the text length and M is the pattern length. And the average case is big O of N, where N is again the text length. Um, it's slightly better than um, brute force in average, but the worst isn't that much better. Uh, the space efficiency, this algorithm like trades space for time, so the space efficiency isn't that good at big O of big O of sigma, sorry. And it's not like terribly bad because space efficiency in our time, we have more space, so it's generally okay. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to comment, but thank you guys. This is Horsebull's Algorithm.